Hello, AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at video number six in our series over topic 5.4, all about defining vector value functions as we slowly make our way into starting to use them for some calculus purposes. And despite the looks of my Bitmoji, I'm not upset about vectors and angles. I'm actually very excited about the fact that I'm going to show you how to write a vector in a component form, given some information about an angle. But more importantly, I think I'm going to be able to shed a little bit more light on why we study the unit vector and basically what practical purpose that it serves. So let's take a look at our example six. Now in our notes here, as you can see, we start with some preliminary information about you being a unit vector. And this unit vector is depicted in this picture, and I think it's pretty clear that that vector has a length of one as denoted by this unit circle. And we know that this angle theta is made with the x-axis. So it probably looks a little bit like your trig class with a unit circle. The terminal point of vector u lies on the unit circle and therefore you should realize that this ordered pair is going to be cosine comma sine just like you learned before well if that is indeed the case then we could say that this vector cosine theta comma sine theta is indeed another name for this particular guy right here right that unit vector and if you want to double check and say, okay, is this truly a unit vector? Well, let's just, just see, let's see what is the magnitude of this U. We could easily compute that by simply taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. And it won't take very long whatsoever to convince you that you have the square root of one, which is one. Now, if you remember from a previous video, we talked about how these two guys are just the components v1 and v2 thinking of those as scalars well we could just simply then multiply v1 by the unit vector i and multiply v2 by the unit vector j and boom that's exactly what we've got right here and so this becomes a very important unit vector to work with especially with physics applications now the problem with that well, yeah, there is a problem because how many things in the world of physics and the real world move or have lengths or magnitudes with a value of one? Wouldn't make for a very interesting world. So if V happens to be any other vector that still has that same angle, let's say that vector V is this particular guy. Maybe it's this red vector here. Well we can very easily still refer back to our blue unit vector by just simply taking whatever the magnitude of V is and multiplying it by that unit vector. And you can see here I have it written in component form, where over here I've written it in I j form and i don't want you to read too much into this a lot of people are thinking oh does the i's have to come before the cosine and the sine does the j have to do the same no i could have very easily just have rewritten this where i put the i and the j at the very back as long as they're all there together so that's kind of the reasoning why we study this unit vector is because we can use this really easy notation and then just simply say hey if you don't want it to be a unit vector just multiply it by its magnitude and boom you still have this wonderful notation that's easy to work with but you now have the vector of the length that you want so let's take a look and see what example six has to offer here it says that you want to write a vector v that has a length of six making an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x-axis and you want to do so in component form. And I may go ahead and maybe extend this a little bit. We can write it <clears throat> in some linear IJ, uh, linear combination form. So what you're going to do here is say, okay, well, my vector V is defined to be the magnitude of V, which we know is six. It's already computed for us. <clears throat> and then we just multiply that by cosine theta, sine theta. Well, remember that 
theta in this problem is 60 degrees. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump right to the ij form, if I will. And I've got cosine 60 degrees here. Make sure that's multiplied by that unit vector i. And then I'll just add that same magnitude multiplied by the sine of 60 degrees times vector j. Now it's really important you always want to make sure that you associate the cosine with the vector i and the sine with the vector j. Now from this point we can just use some basic trigonometry. Let's do this without a calculator. The cosine of 60 degrees, if your trig's not so hot, no big deal. You can just put together a nice little 30, 60, 90 triangle right here and we know that the sides would have this kind of proportion like such. And so the cosine of 60 is going to be 1 half, 6 times 1 half multiplied by i. And then the sine of 60 degrees, a little bit more complicated. That's the square root of 3 divided by 2 multiplied by vector j. And by the time all the dust settles and we do our simplification, we end up with 3i plus 3 times the square root of 3 times j. And that's going to be our vector in linear combination form. Now, if we wrote it in our normal component form using vector brackets, it's perfectly fine. We could call it this. But like I said, you're going to find more often than not in application problems, this will be the more commonly way that these vectors are expressed. And I and I might want to point out at this point, we've, we've been you know, moving pretty deeply into this uh, video series over topic 9.4. And I know that this is a course on AP Calculus BC, you need to understand that many of the things that I've already mentioned aren't necessarily going to be showing up on the AP Calc BC exam. Uh, a lot of times the vector problems can be completely transformed into the world of parametric and you don't have to use IJ notation throughout the AP exam. It's likely that you might use that notation a lot more on the AP physics exam. But I wanted to give uh, my viewers, my students, a really good blanket of, of knowledge based on all things vectors so that you're a lot more comfortable as you move through uh, the, the ending portions of these next few topics, which are very heavily reliant upon calculus. Anyway, I hope this helps and we'll see you at the next video, which is going to be uh, a couple of videos in a row that are going to actually find some real world application of vector and um, motion of various uh, entities. So we definitely want you to stick around for those. We'll see you next time.